Good evening, everybody, and welcome along to the History Program, uh, the Limerick Historical Society, with my co functionary uh, Tom Dunneman. Tom, you're welcome along anyway. Thank you, Tony. Now, Tom, I told you about five minutes ago, we were left down, really, but we saw you on. The guest, there's no contact from the guest at all. Now the dicky board. It's so like the man at the council one time that left me down. Do you remember him a few years ago? Yeah, yeah. He for the county council and he left me down, but never mind. We'll, uh, mm. We can waffle away ourselves for a while about something, you know. Yeah. But it's yeah. amazing when uh, somebody says, then, unless you never know what accidents happen, you know. Yeah. So I did contact him several times today now, but unfortunately. Mm. And uh, now you have, you have bought land. Years ago now, you're going to your landline. And then you had mobile phones and your emails now, you know, so I did try to treat them. But anyway, we're not to worry. Mm. First of all, um, Tom, I hope, I just hope that if uh, this this uh, lockdown happens or doesn't happen, yeah. we could have an outing, you know, in the yeah. next month. To yeah. be handy, like, to, to get to meet people well, again. Yeah, I think the only impediment is Lim- Limerick is the, you know, the, the COVID it. capital of Ireland at the moment. Yeah. 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 Um, and if, even if you did have a walk, people would be afraid, even with vaccinations, you know. And that's oh, the you know, mm. um, people would be afraid because... Uh, I, I like, I'm, I'm looking at other historical society websites now, and there's none of them, you know, local ones and around the country, none of them seem to have any prospect, like, you know, there's even consuls been arranged for later on in the year and early in the new year, but I don't see any historical societies, you know. And the thing about historical societies, we've said it before, the membership is of an age where most people would be vaccinated at this stage, you know, mm-hmm. certainly with one, if not two vaccinations. So, um, but there doesn't seem to be any, you know, the Federation or any of the rest of the societies doesn't seem to be taking the leap, you know, whether they're afraid or what, I don't know. Yeah, but, well, if, I said people are just afraid because I did yeah. talk to a man there about two months ago, he a member of another society, and he said to me, Tony says, will there ever be lectures again, he said to me, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. again the age profile. Yeah. But I'd say it might get okay if... Oh, ah, yeah. I mean, you can't... You can't show, but, uh, like, the, the thing, sad thing about it is you, you'd rather have an outing rather than a lecture right now. Uh, yeah. You know, whereas uh, an outing is out in the out, out, open space. Um, but I was talking to somebody recently and they said the problem with outings is that... In order to hear the speaker, even with microphones, people are intent to gather in in a crowd. So it's, you know, even social distancing doesn't work. Uh, you know, and I was talking to a man who has had both his vaccinations. He's not even in history. He just talking to him generally. And he said, you know, this Indian variant scales him. Like he's up to now, you know, we thought when we got vaccinated, that'd be it. But now they're talking about the Indian variant. Like you, you can't, you can't go on forever worrying about you know, no, that is true, mm-hmm. but still, it just it frightens people, you know. Yeah, it, yeah, people, especially of so when you're over 70, people really get yeah. afraid, as yeah. you know. And, and I know that most I know I got into trouble. And one man took me to task one time for saying that um, people didn't get interested in history till they were over 40, which mm. is basically true, really. I mean, look well, at as you know, I was at a funeral at Lawn yesterday, and there was a double grave behind the one the funeral I was at. And it's for a mother and daughter who died of COVID. So it's kind of a frightening, you know, two graves dug there and, and uh, sheets of, uh, of timber over them just waiting for the funeral to arrive. But uh, um, the, one of the relations was, was going back to Lebanon with the army and they had a party and the mother and the daughter got the COVID. Now the mother, I'd say, was elderly and the daughter might be, I don't know, she mightn't be that young either, but, you know, to have two members of one family being buried, a bit like the famine times, you know. So it has it hasn't gone away, you know. No, yeah. you know, famous man I always use that phrase, it hasn't gone away, you know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. but like that, there's so many things that we could uh, we could discuss. But we're talking of graveyards, first of all, which isn't a nice thing to be talking of, is the mm. condition of some of the graveyards. You know, the old the old yeah. story, I suppose, is true. There's no votes in the graveyard, but the graveyards, some of them are in a deplorable condition. Some yeah. very old graveyards, you know, there's nobody seems to be seems to care about them. But not just that, but like I was on Main Street now today and there's a huge graveyard within, beside, just beside, and in Chadwell as well, there's a graveyard just beside the J-Pitch there. And, but a lot of graves are neglected. I know 
I suppose families die out and does not, but it's, it's, it's the patient you see headstones, beautiful carved headstones, you know, with a lot of money spent on them and hard, hard to read them because of neglect, you know, they're not kept maintained. And I mean, I, I know of families who don't know how their grave is, or they wouldn't know how their grave is until someone dies because they don't go, you know, and I suppose people aren't interested in, in, in graves until a funeral happens or they look for some, somewhere to be buried um, for, for one of the relations. But, um, and then other, other, other graves are very well maintained, like, you know, so it's, it, it depends on the family. You know. It does, it depends on the family. But it's a pity some of the old graves, people that were, were good to their community or uh, historically or otherwise, yeah. and to see graves belong to these people completely rejected. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's terrible, really. But then, yeah. I suppose, who are we to say? Because, although, funnily enough, and what, another thing I watch out for are the old traditions of, they say, like, leaving the coffin up on the, the wall before yeah. the brought in. Yeah. That seems to me now, well, I suppose it probably still survives in some rural areas. But in yeah. the city now, that was never kind of practiced as such. You know, and, yeah. and it was... The told people lately now, they, they were looking at me, uh, I just happened to meet these people I knew, and it got around to talking about where graves are situated, and I said, of course, they're all facing, facing east. They looked at me, facing east? Yeah, I said, you do not know that? No, they said, they never knew. Why do you, why do you, and I said, a, pr a priest? All priests are very facing facing the opposite direction. Yeah, a congregation, yeah. Yeah, they, so yeah. he's supposed to go up in the last day and face his congregation. Yeah. But like that, that's got to disappear with the shots of space now. I tell oh, yeah. you. Oh, yeah. Stick in wherever there's a gap. You just, wherever there's a gap, you'll be put in, like, you know. Um, yeah. But, yeah, but they're saying that, that some of the old graveyards still have the style on the side of the graveyard, you know, the, the, the coffin was hmm. put on before to well, take the graveyard as such. Well, well, that's still evident. It's out in Kildaima, old Kildaima. Uh, the Father Mulqueen, who was murdered uh, by the white boys. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. buried. And it, you think it's the, there's nothing on the head. When you walk in, you see all the headstones. You think there's a headstone with nothing on it until you go around and you see the inscription is on the other side because he's buried facing the, as you say, the congregation of the people. Yeah. But yeah. when you walk into the graveyard, you see a blank headstone and then you see all the other headstones facing you. But that's the, one of the priests. Yeah, yeah. 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 And luckily now for women, the, the local monks and lands here, at least the, 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 the rule was kept fairly, fairly stringent. Yeah. So, yeah. Because there, there was a guy, well, most, I suppose, you are walking in a graveyard, especially in the city ones, you get to know every grave where they yeah. are. But there was a fellow who's retired now from monks and lands, and uh, he knew every grave. And yeah. I tried his patience a few times now, and he said to me, Come on, I'll show you what that is, you know, yeah. some grave yeah. to ask him about. And he knew all the graves where they were, and you know. But that's see, that's a relatively modern graveyard, or it's a, a cemetery, as they call it, a city graveyard, and it's on yeah. a grid system. And there's, if you look at the walls in Mount Saint Lawrence, you've seen this. There's, say A B C D F G H and numbers then, and it's like a map. There's a grid system. So if you have, the, like, if you look up the the register, you'll have, uh, we'll say, if your uncle Brown is in, it might be yeah. H twenty two. So you go along to find H and you go across to 22 and it, you should meet the grave. You know, that's... Uh, then there have been infringes. I know, I know people, there were infringes where people have nearly dug into the next grave alongside them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that happened very just... close together. Then this thing uh, about, about boundaries and, and graveyards. Some people don't want them. Some people mm -hmm. do. You know, a border around the grave. It does yeah. give you protection, okay, but then they're forbidden in some places, you yeah. know. Well, I, I visited a couple of graveyards in Australia now, and the local authority, they allow headstones, but nothing else. So the, the lawnmower can go through and cut the grave. The, oh, yeah. And, and even if you put flowers or anything on the grave, you can only put it on the headstone. If you put it on the grave, it'll be knocked away by the lawnmower. So it's very well kept, like, and so there's no there's no curves, no, you can't put in curves, you can't put in any... Um, you know, like okay, a new a new grave will have a raise, but it's the the idea is that it'll it'll finally go down to ground level and there'll be grass put on it. And you know, like I, I was in a graveyard in that lawn now yesterday. It's it's the, the last thing you'd expect to see in a graveyard. 
It's like a building site, all gravel and rubble around bits of mixed concrete, uh, graves inside in the middle of it. Now, the, the older part is tarmacked and it's, it's well kept, but the newer part is just like they just dug up graves and they're not, there's no, like, it, it's not a very nice place to walk into, you know. Um, it's what's a coos, coosin, coosin, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, uh, but I, I like. As my children would, would often remind me, like they were often bored. I, I love being in a strange place and having an hour and going in and looking at graveyards, you know, um, just looking at, even looking at the names and looking at the, the, the amount of young people that are buried in graveyards, you know, people in their 30s. And really, like we talk about COVID now and people dying young at 50 and 60, but I mean, sometimes even looking at obituaries. They say he 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 reached the ripe old age of seventy, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was showing that it was beyond what they were expected, like you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We see that a lot now, but the only thing is, in that, well, I've often trips I've done around Mount St. Arms about diff- different groups there. Yeah. And they figure out there was a a rich side and a poor side. Yeah. Which happened in certain graveyards. People say you're joking me. No, it's a. Uh, we're all grave, all graves in the poor side because yeah. the Mount St. Lawrence is very high up on one side, and uh, the plots right up the center and around the church for all the expensive ones. That's yeah. a, and there are vaults there. People forget that there's some of those those um sites are actually vaults that they yeah. go right under the ground. People yeah. can't believe that when I show them graves and I say that's a vault, and they say yeah. oh, they just think it's just a simple grave, but it's not right under the ground, yeah. But, all the then all the religious orders got they're all around the church as well. They were the good yeah. side. Of that. Um, I know there's a bishop. Um, uh, what's his name from from Colin? Odwar. He exhumed was it his mother or his father? I can't think now which of them. And brought him up to be buried in Mount St. Lawrence. Mm. And they're buried in the, as you face the church going up. They're around on the right hand side, and all the city merchants are all out there. Yeah. All the, the rich merchants in the city, they're all on the high ground, and then yeah. all, the, all the misfortunes are over and the, looking at it on the right hand mm. side. That was liable to flood because they're uh, not liable to flood, like, but it was very wet ground. The, the rain that would actually pour down into the far side. But the, I suppose, earlier then, the, the older merchants who would be Protestant are buried in St. John's graveyard, you know, oh, if yeah. you go back to the, oh, yeah. yeah, and that's. Like it's, I I love going into St John's grave when you can get in there, you know, yeah. uh, when it's not locked up. Like the, the amount of names are there that have died out, died out, but the the names are gone, and they were they were the um they ran the city, you know, the, a lot of those families. Oh, they did. Uh, yeah, I know. You know. I know that the the, the Massey's Godfrey Massey, they have a big vault there on the far side, yeah. and uh, Mansells have a vault there. Yeah. Uh, und- have a big vault there. Yeah. Then there's a story about one for I can't think now who spent his life doing up his own one. He used, used to sit inside during the day. That's right. His own uh, vault. Mm. And of course, you know, we were going to be buried there afterwards. You know, but yeah. Yeah. some of the, the rich um, merchants. And of course, some of the big memorials they put up to themselves. And funny enough, I just something that's coming to my head. I was reading in, uh, it's in, the, in, in Lenin's history. Where there was somebody was to be buried at night, a Catholic was being buried, and a group of um, it, it says Cards and Protestants came around. Oh no, the minister gave out about the burial. He, he was St. Albert, definitely. The, the, fe- the, fellow been, the fellow that was being buried was St. Albert. I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, uh, 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 Lenin says the re- he remonstrated in the most. Um, yeah. In some manner, and the crowd jostled him and called him hard names. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the burial and with the head, he was buried there anyway afterwards. It was, yeah. But yeah. there's, um, there's, that's in the newspaper. I came across that in the newspapers. But he, he was from Tabard. I can't think of his name now. I can't think of the name of the minister. But, I uh, think the minister Fitzgibbon, was he? Of his he, It's Fitzgibbon, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're right. So, yeah. And, uh, it's in Lenin anyway, Lenin. And it's amazing that somebody would be giving out about a burial, you not know, saying mm-hmm. he's not going in. And there were burials in some of these places at night. Oh, yeah. There were Catholics who wanted to go into a Protestant graveyard, they had to bury mm-hmm. them at night. Yeah. Because uh, 
quantum, you know, going to be buried. Remember, uh, PJ Dundon told me about they stopped burials in the Eskeaton Cemetery um, because they were burying in the church, in the abbey, and the the the, the, the it was getting out of hand, so uh, oh, yeah. they stopped they stopped burials. But he said people who had family plots there often went down at night and went over, took the coffin over the gate and went in and buried people, you know, and then yeah, like once it was done, it was done. But he remember he remembers people being buried there, at, you know, in the dark at night. So um, it, it was it wasn't unusual. But there was lots of disputes. Like in Glen, there was a big dispute over. There was a person Weldon who came in and he wanted to build. He he wanted um, money for the building the new Protestant church and he started putting levies on the Catholic graveyard. Now it was kind. It was previously. Uh, it was. It was a graveyard for all, like you know, and and he started putting levies on. There was a big dispute, and he tried to go up like the Fitzgerald of his given. He tried to stop, and, and they threw stones out in the road, and you know. Uh, but even like there's still I hear stories of people um, having rows over encroaching on graveyards and graves, um, taking you know, going over it, putting a putting a curb over into another person's grave, and there's no maps you see, so it's down to trust. And people can get very uh, territorial about their graves, you yeah. know, um, and rightly so. I mean, if you have a grave there and you come out and you see somebody else has been crushed in it. There was the old, the, the old marriage proposal, of course. How would you yeah. like to be buried with my crowd? You know, but even today, even today, I saw I, I saw in the graveyard a, pla- a placard up and hanging around, uh, hanging on uh, just a, uh, a type thing uh, uh, done in, in plastic. Uh, this is a was a O'Brien grave. What that wasn't the name. Uh, please, you know, st- keep off or whatever. Like the, there was obviously some dispute over the grave, and they had put a thing up on it in case anybody else thought had been buried there. You know, and I, I, a man told me up in Clare, the undertaker came with the with a funeral, and there was two fellas inside in the grave, the dog grave, to prevent them put, putting the coffin in, and they had to have negotiations to maintain they were buried in. The wrong grave, and these two local men went in and, and went into the grave to stop the coffin going in. You know, so it can get very contentious because you see, yeah. like if there's a gra- if there's a grave dug and the funeral is going ahead, it's very hard to stop it then. And this yeah. happened, especially in Ireland, grave ha- funerals happen quickly. You know, someone dies today, they could be buried tomorrow or the day after, and by the time people find out the grave is dug, it could be too late. You know, so yeah, but I mean that's. I was talking to a grave digger one time. He told me he found lots of broken headstones inside in graves when he, when he was digging graves. And the reason was when families had died out, um, they dig a grave and, and knock, the, knock the headstone in. So there was no one there to complain. And then once they were buried, they could up their own headstone, you know. Yes, and yeah. yeah. But there are a few little things that have come to mind. I would never walk in the grave now. Even yeah. if I was at a funeral, I'd always keep off the actual, I'd walk in the very end, end of yeah. the grave. Yeah. I wouldn't go into the graveyard till the house was gone in. Yeah. And uh, there's all these small little things that have been ignored nowadays, you know, which is yeah. a pity. You know, uh, I, I, I think, like, that is a tradition. Like, you don't, you don't go ahead of the of the cops. Like, you, you kind of yeah. let the grave. If you want to go in, and I suppose the family would have to go in after, after the, you know. Um, but I've seen fellas, like you say, running down to the grave before they to get Absolutely. there first, you yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. There's a camera the walk, you know. I but there, do was, that. There, there was a tradition in Kilkeedy, I came across it, where they, they, they carry the coffin round um, seven times around, around the perimeter of the graveyard. Now, it wouldn't be as big at the time. And there was... A, a dispute between two families over who carried a coffin. Uh, this was in the newspapers back in the eighteen thirties, and the two families fought, and they fought so vigorously to drop the coffin and burst. It mustn't be a very strong coffin, but the cops was exposed with the row. It said, and the families still live. The, the families are named in the that fought like, and they still live in the area. But the the they, they were fighting over who get under the coffin, and the coffin got dropped and broke. Like it's like some sort of a comedy, but you know. They were so no, there could be land involved. Like whoever went under the coffin, could, they could be claiming the land as well. You know, there could be more to it than just 
uh, the right to go into the coffin. But uh, you know, I thought this, but but in in the story, it it also to- revealed that the, this tradition of of you know, it must go back to pagan times that you went around the co- that you went around clockwise seven times around the graveyard. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, it's I mean, the same with the holy wells as regards going round, and then yeah. there was. It was kind of superstition in, wasn't it, for uh, anti-clockwise and certain things. Yeah, kind well, it's supposed, to, it's supposed to be associated with sun worship. That the circle is, you know, yeah. you're going around worshiping the sun, you know, and but whether that's true or not. Uh, but then the other tradition there was in Kikidi, and still they put on, they bless the coffin outside the graveyard because from pagan times, when the priest wasn't allowed to go in to the to the graveyard, he blessed the coffin. Outside, and then they would proceed and bury the bury them, and they still do that in, in Kikidi, you know, as far as I know. Um, yeah, yeah, because maybe some of the local traditions they have. Yeah, uh, usually that's they're kind of dying out. Although, what makes me laugh is now a very you could a subject you couldn't really bring up uh, at times would be the amount of people that die in an area. Uh, if they're not from the area, you know that's they're kind of filling up the graveyards and uh, why don't they go home? Why don't they go home to be buried to the wrong place instead of being buried here, you know, because they're living in Limerick, yeah. say, for example. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Somebody from Dublin is living here. Surely, yeah. isn't the council don't say he can't be buried here? Let's go back to Dublin. He's not from here. Mm. So, in, well, you've got that in, in, in like a lot of the country graveyards around the city, you know, people don't want to be buried in Mount St. Lawrence because of vandalism of that so they yeah. tend to be going to Mungret and outlying yeah. areas to be buried because the relatives can visit yeah uh Kilmory outside in castle troy i mean that's that's it's gone a long time they're, they're finished those graves you know yeah but you were allowed to buy graves there even if there was nobody in them but now at the extension of mount st lawrence i don't think you can do that i don't think they'll allow you to buy a grave you yeah. know well, I, I i know i know of one family that exhumed their son's grave, their son's body from the grave in Mount St. Lawrence and brought it to um, Mungret, I think, because yeah. they couldn't, because the, the mother was afraid to visit because of, you know, people drink, having drinking parties inside Mount St. Lawrence and, you know, um, the grave diggers can't stop them. You know, if you're, if you're a gang of five, five or six fellas with drinking drugs on them, you're not going to challenge them, you know. Um, but uh, no, it's fascinating when you look, even looking at the different carvings on the headstones and looking at different, um, like, I know you had an uncle who was Peter, um, named Dundas, I was on about him, Clark, was it? He, he was, yeah. uh, he, right? Where's that? Where? Out in, out in Fines. On oh, Fines, oh yeah, Paddy, Paddy Clark, yeah. yeah. He was uh, Paddy... my my father's first cousin. Oh yeah, I thought he wasn't, he wasn't your uncle, yeah. He went, yeah. no, he... His, uh, his mother, this Paddy Clark's mother would have been brown, but he went oh, out yeah. to learn his trade, out to finds. He never came home. Yeah. <laughs> it's more of a, is, he bar- is he buried in finds? He is, as far as I know, he is anyway. So, yeah, he should have been sent back. According to you, he should be sent back into Limerick. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Take him. <Yeah>. He's taken <laughs> back into buried. He filled yeah. up the grave and in finds. But actually, in the, it's still known as the Stone Cutter's Cross. It's just before yeah. it's last class before you come into uh go into finds. It's up in yeah. the on the left hand side he lived. But I was talking the story about it's after the turn for Shannon Gordon. You, there's a turn for Shannon Gordon and the next cross then is the Stonecutters Cross. Yeah, Stonecutters yeah. Cross. Yeah. Uh, a man from Glynn told me one time, who, who, who I mentioned, told me that he was sent down, God, he was only young for the time. He was sent down to meet Paddy Clark coming off the bus from Fines to Glynn. To push, um, to push new names and um, uh, uh, chisel them onto a headstone. Yeah. So we went down to meet him, and he met him. Got off with it. All he had was a little small little bag, and he was thinking, how was he going to do this uh, with a little bag? What, what, you know? So he was told he to go into a house. I did stone cutter, Paddy Clark said to the children, go in there to the house there, and tell the woman you want the loan of a shovel for me. So he went in and got the shovel off the woman. She gave it out to him. So up to Kilfargus. So up to Kilfargus anyway. Yeah. And he said he was intrigued at what this Paddy Clark was going to do. And he dug a hole up front of the headstone. Mm. He couldn't figure out what he was going to do. Why was he digging a hole? 
and uh, he waited and waited. And he's next thing, Penny Tack was very small. Penny Tack was only yeah. about five foot three. I barely, I, I saw him once, but he jumped into the hole and he was level with the headstone. Mm. And he was, up, he was up the chisel away. He's all right. And you ran. Yeah. told me the story. He said, he always remember that to see him jumping yeah. into the hole and uh, yeah. he took the chisel away. And mm-hmm. when we have machines now to do these things. Oh, yeah, yeah. But even, but even, but even, even with machines, you can still lie down on wet grass and or wet soil, and 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 ch- like it's a lot easier if you could oh, yeah. get 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 eye level, get eye level, or you know, trying to do it. Um, he was able to get into the hole and chisel away whatever height he was at, and he was used obviously used to doing it. And uh, your yeah. man told me the story said he just waited and watched him chiseling away. He filled it's, in the hole. When he was finished. Like, I met a fellow recently. He, He's a painter, a house painter, not, not a not a painter like Jim O'Fell. Yeah. Yeah, no, pa- yeah. Right? Yeah. I but I said to him talking about her painter. What? A painter. Yeah. yeah. A, a painter decorator, I would say. But I said to him, How are you getting on since the COVID? He said to me, I've got the COVID bulge, he said, you know. I've I've I was off there for as long as eating eat do not know eating and drinking. The problem now, he said. If I get a job to do skirting boards, I have to turn it down because I can't. You can't. You can paint fine up, like at a height. But if he's to go down, if he's to go down painting skirting boards, he said, the you know he's he's put on the weight. Like he said, it's not as easy. You know, yeah. as you get older and put on weight, he says, you know, you can, it's a young, a young man's job. Yeah. What about your man Tom with the Irish ones in in uh, in Australia? The Irish. Um, uh, Headstones, if people wanted Irish language ones yeah. in Australia. Yeah, Thomas F. Cohen, he, he, he used to write to uh, Dr. McGrath, who was a Gwail Gore, and Moraid McGrath was his daughter. Wasn't it a isn't it? A T, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and they're, they're buried in Glen, actually, the, the McGraths, and they have a headstone, uh, Australia. Um, but the it was for the old Gaelic script. Um, he used to write to Dr. McGrath and he, the, the, the Irish families, some of the people, some of the families in Australia were more Gaelic than some of the people who were in Ireland. But uh, I suppose they want to be different in, in the Melbourne and stand out. Like, you know, you had the Italians and the Muslims and they all had their own script. Yeah. So they wanted to be, you know, so Thomas F. Clan mentions that, you know, I think um, the fellow who found the other chalice, they put up a headstone to him, uh, Flanagan. And they wanted to do it in, in the old Gaelic script. And they wrote to Dr. McGrath and he uh, wrote it up by hand and posted it out to him and gave it to the, the, the Petty Clarks in, in Melbourne. And they, they did it that way. Then, you know, it was, in, it was interesting you yeah. know, uh, to think that in Australia there were, there's headstones with old Gaelic script on them. It was um, to be. Yeah. Because it's the odd one out in Mount St. Lawrence, you see the odd one. And they were usually, we'd say, what we would call a terrible term, I know, grey goals, you know, but yeah. you'd know who they were when you'd see yeah. some of the ones, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it, you'd know it, with, with but it, it, like people, people associated with, with republicanism. And sometimes you know, it is, you know, like the doors now again who'd be famous republicans. Yeah. Uh, they have, have it on there. But then other people who were just interested in the Irish language and Irish culture uh, also put it on. So... Um, but it's you know you, you, sometimes you can tell a lot by what's written on a headstone. You know, um, like I, I was in Athlone yesterday. There was just a, a headstone down, uh, Susie So, and that was it. There was no that, Susie So S U S S U Z I E S O died two thousand and ten. Whatever day two thousand and ten. So I came home and I looked up. And obviously, she was the wife of a Chinese restaurant owner with a name like that. But she fell off. The, but there was nothing. And she had a husband and sons. And she fell outside in Lanzarote off steps, a freak accident, and was killed. But looking at the headstone, there was nothing about her family, you know, just her name and her day to date. So you had to go away and find it out, like, you know. Whereas others then, like, they give you a name, address, and where, you know. Uh, but the problem is, some some for some headstones, uh, they're often done maybe 20, 30 years after the person dies, so there's very little on it. They'll just put up the date, you know. 
when like there might be five or six people buried in a grave, and when they put up the headstone, they want to commemorate everybody that's buried in it. And uh, like a lot, a lot of times, the date can be wrong. There might be only a day or two. But when you when you go into the newspaper and look at the obituary, the date will be before that date or whatever. You know, yeah. uh, they didn't have the internet those in those days, and sometimes people didn't even know. I was talking to my uncle yesterday at the funeral, and he said to me that his mother didn't know what her date of birth was, you know, uh, when she grew up. She, they had no birthdays. They didn't have birthdays, and uh, she didn't know what, what date. She knew she thought it was March, but didn't know what date. So until they looked at her birth or whatever, you know. But, um, you know, it's kind of hard to imagine nowadays. But that, like, like that, people thinking back then, trying to work out when did somebody die, like, you know, and... That's why there's often mistakes on headstones. But um, well, it's very handy that I personally now for the city, it's great to see an address on them. Yeah. I know it's handy in the in the as you know in the county, I would do it in the townland. Yeah. Good, good, yeah. But there's so mm. many in the city, if you get an, a, a name that there's ooh, there's like John Ryan's I mean, there could be two thousand yeah. John Ryan's, but you get mm. an address and at least you know, because oh. I know that when I'm going along. I said, oh, look at that, and I know him. I go, hadn't said that. I was in Mungus at a funeral. Oh, God, it must be 12 months ago now. And I knew nearly everybody in the row down the line. I think there was one person I didn't know. I knew yeah. the rest of them were, you know, yeah. I, I know him and I know her, you know. Yeah, yeah. Four yeah. yeah. four just beyond graves. One thing I would, uh, I am opposed to are black headstones. So mm. black marble with gold lettering, because the lettering wears off. Yeah. And you can't yeah. read them without, it's impossible to read them. But as you, you were talking about the same names, uh, what, what I see on his sons well is um, nicknames, like Ryan Shani or, oh, you yeah. know, that they put down, because like you're out in Tipperary and you have a name like Ryan, you know, yeah. you, unless you have the nickname, you, you yeah. won't know who they are, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. and I can think of a grave now, I know by his nickname as well. Yeah. Uh, when I saw his name down and I saw in brackets, he said, oh, I know who I knew who I had, you know, who was buried there, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's handy but, uh, I, I saw one today now, um, and it was down as dig, Digger, whatever his name, right? And I was thinking, like, was that his profession? Or how, how did he get, like, if, you know, like, yeah. if you see a name, like, further, like, with, say, a place name, you can say, well, that's where they're from, or there's them, you know. But to see a name like Digger, was he, was he fighting? Or was he, was he a, was he a grave digger? Or you know, it was just a name he inherited from his father. You know, yeah. well, down in in, in Clare, I remember years ago being in the graveyard, um, and the way down to Kiki, I know down at Kilrush is a graveyard, mm. and there are the the tools of the person, the yeah. trade. You know, yeah, uh, for a tailor, you see a needle and thread, and you see, you know, yeah. a I saw us. It was easy, yeah. I saw yeah. for a, I saw for a carpenter and yeah. all the all the headstones only have them down there. I think I told you I saw one down there in that graveyard, yeah. the one you're talking about, and then a picture of a JCB on the feather's headstone. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 did, yeah. And the last uh, are above ground because they, 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 what I mean by above ground is they had to raise them so slightly because. Um, yeah. The, the, first of all, the ground was too too, too rocky underneath, and yeah. afraid of water coming in through the graveyards at the near the sea. Because yeah. I remember what happened up in in Mayo there a few years ago. So the the mud slide came yeah. down, and God, is it? Yeah. What happened to all the graves there? You know. Mm. Oh, my my uncle my uncle is buried in Wicklow, and there's um, a grave behind him, and it's there's a pint of Guinness on it. Uh, a cowboy hat and a fiddle, you know, a, a, as a fiddling is a, a musical instrument. So yeah. I mean, like the, the the fiddle and the hat, are, 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 but putting put, putting a pint of Guinness on it, like I mean, you know, uh, it's like these bringing up the gifts at, at um, oh god, uh, I think that's like, bringing up gifts, you know. Yeah, and like like when you see him bringing up a packet of fags yeah. and a lighter. And a bottle of Guinness. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a traditionalist or anything like that. But I think there's some things you know you should leave out of. Stupid, you know. really, when you think about it. You yeah. know, yeah, yeah. Uh, some people uh, think it's a great thing. It's just silly, you know, because uh, I, I don't. 
you know that we could get on to that get on to anniversaries and i like reading the uh, anniversaries yeah. you know yeah. on papers you know because yeah. i know you have rip to give with the the current ones which say uh, you know yeah yeah anniversaries of people that are dead and some people really respect them they could be 14 50 years dead yeah yeah yeah. Down, yeah you know yeah and yeah. you see the amount of them there the only thing I object to is this, that there's not proper addresses put down. Yeah. You know, just as Jimmy of, of Western. Yeah. Like if, you, if, if you know him, if, if you know him, it's okay. But if you don't know, you don't know who they are. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a pity, you know. But see, that's, we, like, by that time we, we make that make sense ourselves, we presume every knows where some place is or, or knows where, you know, uh, an address is. Like, if you go down somewhere in Glen. It doesn't mean that everybody else knows. Like, you, like if, if I know it, doesn't mean that everybody, everybody else. Is. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Because so. the Limerick leader now usually has um, will have county ones, uh, as opposed to the the, the papers and the, the free paper in Limerick would have mainly city ones. Yeah, because that's distributed in the city. Yeah. Whereas the leader, the leader has gone down a lot now. I remember a time you get two pages in the leader, and you yeah. get townlands that. You've, you've forgotten about, you know. Yeah. And uh, I'd say, oh, yeah, I know, I know what the town, I'd be curious about the town then. I wouldn't know the person, but I yeah, know what yeah. the town then was. Yeah. You know, and, we, and when you see, sometimes you'd see the name, like, you know, Leahy or Hartness or Broderick, you'd know straight away that said be feed or, yeah. Without even, yeah. without even yeah. knowing you know what, what he had to do. That is changing as well, I suppose. Ah, know? yeah, with more, people are moving now and, you know. That's kind of changing, you know. Yeah, yeah. We, we yeah. often discussed that before now in other programs that yeah. the only blowings into a place years ago was the local school teacher or the local guard. You know, uh, it didn't really affect the priests so much. Priests are usually from their own area. You know, they, they come in. Yeah, well, the, the, well priests didn't the have families. Priests didn't have families. Well, most of them, and they didn't have. Uh, they didn't stay long. Like they were moved on again. So there was yeah. no fix. They weren't, they weren't fixed. Like premium manager was another for another for the, that came in, you know. Like this, like there was kind of a pecking order in. Yeah. You know, the schoolmaster, the premium manager, the bank manager, they were the main kind of. Yeah. Uh, you know dignitaries in the town oh, and yes, the parish priest. It's funny now. This person now again. We we won't mention her name, but she had a name. Um, it's very unusual for a woman. And this person said to me, where did she get that name? I know how she got the name. Her father, you remind me of her father was a bank manager. Mm. And they lived in, uh, to be careful here now, they lived in this town where there was an object found. And she was called after the object. Could you believe that? Sure. And I know, I know how she got her name because she, was, she told me herself. It's an unusual mm. name. And when she explained but it to me... Wasn't, she, wasn't, she wasn't chalice, no? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it was an, a kind of an object that was found. But it's funny that there were people were named after things, you know. Yeah, because yeah. I'd often say to somebody now with an unusual Christian name, uh, especially girls, uh, how did you get that name? You know? Yeah. And they have an explanation for it. Uh, mm. either my, I don't know, one girl told me her, her mother was uh, reading a book, this book she read, and she had to be born... <laughs> And she gave her the name of the character from the book, which, which yeah. happens, you know. And I know, she, I know, she, I know a woman who went to uh, see a film in 1966, um, and she named her daughter after the main character in the film. Oh yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that, well, that is true because it's like the one that stands to mind. I always use as an example is the the, the girl's name Karen. Mm. All the Karens, people say is Karen Carpenter. No, I said 1966. Now, a woman thanked me as well. Oh, thank God. She says, you don't think I'm, I'm older than that, you know. That uh, she was a television programme. It was Karen. It was, uh, that was the girl's name in it. And uh, I don't know who was even in it, but it gave the name Karen because of the television programme, you know. Yeah. And there's some other awful names that I heard over the years. And I well, think, uh, the, so the, soap, the soaps in the 70s gave us the crystals, crystals and the, you know, different names of that. Which, it's a pity, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, there was a crystal in some soap, either Dynasty or Dallas or something. Dynasty, and, uh, Dynasty, yeah. Was it, yeah, yeah. Was that Joan Collins, was it? No, they, well, her rival in it, I can't think of her name, good looking one, she was married to... L Linda, was she Linda something, Linda? 
Linda Evans or Linda? Director, uh, or uh, she was married to um, to John Derrick, the film director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh, Bo, Bo Derrick, Bo Derrick. Was it Bo Derrick? Him, yeah, after, after, the, 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 after Crystal. But, uh, she, must be, she must be named after Cole, was she? You wonder. <laughs> <laughs> but the other, the other, other names like Goretti and uh, uh, Rossum, you know, yeah. like names oh, like that you can tell. Gabler and Rossum, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's identified in the names what years you say. So yeah. he had, you were Gabler like, and Rossum was here in the 50s, I think, 1951 or 52, he was yeah, there. Yeah. And you get, and then, you get the names. Ma well, Marion then could be 54. Oh, Marion, yeah. Uh, Gerald's, and yeah. uh, Magella. Of course, St. Gerald yeah. Major, you know, mm -hmm. and then you get all these names that came uh, after yeah. various saints of the year, you know, new yeah, names yeah. were. They were never used before the 50s, those names, you no, know. No, always, no. Uh, most families had a Patrick and a John and a Michael. Yeah. They were the common ones, you know, and then you got a few other ones put in, all because of uncles. And there were great fighting in families over names. Yeah. Was, I know cases, I can think of in my mind, that one side of the family will say called him John, mm. and then the other side wanted him called will say Joseph, yeah. and they refused. They kept calling him John, and they kept calling him Joseph. Because yeah. I remember a house you go to, uh, you go knocking at the door, and you look for um, you say we look for Gerald, and they say Gerald there. And he is. Hold on a second, Michael, you wanted at the door. Yeah. yeah. I knew he would say, I knew he would say Gerald. He had a different name inside the house. Yeah. And I remember when at this particular house one night, there was another fellow there looking for another member of the family. And he said, I'm looking for, I can't think of his name. And he said his name. And the other name then was, we said, yeah. just say, he him, it's Christy there. He is Christy. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, you wanted it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, yeah. Two names. I think that's, that's what, what I'm trying to please old people and, and they oh, put the two yeah. names. Yeah. You know, it, it happened so many times yeah. that people objected that his side and her side, you know. Well, you see, there was a there was a, a tradition which is long gone now, but the the firstborn was named after the the, the grandfather on the yes. husband's side. The second the second born was named after the grand. Well, it said boys. Yeah. Second born boy was named after the grandfather on the mother's side, and then the third boy was named after the father. You know, so yeah. you had. Liam Nairn, Liam from Turnafulla. Liam was on when I with me now and he explained all that. He did up to a T about yeah. the names. So <laughs> he remembered the, the rotation of them, you know. I remember yeah. him talking about that, about the grandfather. Yeah. And well, it's, it's handy. I know you've discussed this before, but it's handy when you're tracing families. Like, because, let's we'll say, my father is James. His father was Thomas. So I'm named after my grandfather. The second, my next brother was John, named after my mother's father and then James was named after my father and then my and the, the fourth boy was born on the 16th of March so he's Patrick so just the time was St. Patrick and then my sister was named after my grandmother but that's yeah. that, that that was the tradition you know and if you go back along yeah. you know but my, you know you have the right family you know when yeah, you go down yeah. with names yeah. you know but the trouble, the trouble is you could have you could have uh, you could have 20 James Ryan's like you know, and and the like, and the, all their all their their grandchildren will be named James, like so. It's kind of unless you have the nickname, you know, uh, because I think it's confusing, yeah. you have, you need to be local to know nicknames. You need to know yeah, somebody. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. And sometimes you see nicknames. I was shocked. I I, saw, I heard my father calling a guy by his nickname one day, and I I didn't think. He answered, but the thing is, sometimes people take they they accept their nicknames, but other people can be very, um, you know, like uh, I know from doing parish journals, if you put yeah. in a nickname, even though they're known locally, is it the person can take an exception to it, like you say, who told you to put in, you know? Yeah, and, uh, it's like it's like even uh, uh, Richard being called Dick. Some people don't like yeah. that. You know? No, no. Don't no. call me that, you know. Yeah. And then yeah. I know he was Dick or whatever it was, you know. Some people mm. don't really take on breach. No, some, some people are very precious about it. Like even their full name was uh, uh, Jonathan, if you call him John or, you know, that's yeah. my name, you know, uh, they, they want to be called by their full name. And then other people don't care what you call them, like, you know, so it's... 
Yeah. <laughs> as long as you don't call him early in the morning, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Names is a funny thing. You could talk about names until the cows come home. And uh, yeah. we were two programs. We did one years ago, Tom. Do you remember? We did a program on Christian names. And, uh, we did. Yeah. We didn't like it. You know, no. we were no. some of their names, you know. I know. Uh, I, I got in trouble over that as well. From... <laughs> Within my own family, <laughs> I gave out about a name and I forgot that it was in my own family. But anyway, so my, my, late, my, late, my, my mother had the program and gave out to me. She said, You have a niece by that name, she said to me. I said, I you can walk. You can walk. Uh, actually, I saw today on television, I saw um, what's the TD? Hildegard. Hildegard Nocton. Yeah. 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 God. Hildegard, where did the name come from? I don't yeah. know. You know. You think she? You think, but she, she, you think she shortened her name like the Hilda? Hilda. You know. I wonder what did the caller go to school? Did the caller Hilda? Yeah. Did the caller Gard? Did the caller Gertrude or Gard yeah. or something? You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Hildegard. Yeah. You know. Then there's some names yeah. that are. Also, our, I remember the long flag growing up. We always knew Church of Ireland names. You know. Yeah. You never got you never got a Catholic called Trevor now, for example. Oh he no, a, gar, was, a garden. Oh yeah, if you see, if you see, um, being interviewed. Oh, well, then they had people had kind of aspirations. They wanted their sons and daughters to be different, you know. Yeah. And they gave them names that, well, yeah. we, we, we called them for want of a better word, Church of Ireland names, you know. Yeah. We wanted them to be different. And that little bit of brandy came into it and gave them yeah. nice names. Uh, yeah. You know, the, oh God, we would, uh, there's names flashing through my mind this minute now, but uh, we only identify mm. people, you know. Yeah, but yeah. Awful names, you know. Yeah, yeah. There the were even afflictions in the name, some of them. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awful. But, and then the way to spell yeah. them, you know, the way to spell And people tend to be good spelling names, you know. There's a, yeah. there's a swimmer out there now, Sharon something, S H A R R. She insists on having two R's in this. Yeah. You know? Yeah, why yeah. why would you bother about having two hours? Or, I see I see people know that they put Michael, M Y K E L. You know, I know it's a phonetic spelling, you know. Yeah. M Y K E L. It's the same name, but they just try to be uh, different. Totally you know. different. Yeah. Or, totally want to be different. Bri- you know? Bri- like Brian knows one, B R Y A N or B R I A N. You know, and you've two yeah. Well, yeah. is the, is the one of the worst ones ever. So yeah. like all Latty, you know. Yeah. You yeah. look at it, and uh, I mean, this, yeah. this to me, that's just been different, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maeve, uh, Maeve, there's and now there's oh god, there's some some silly yeah. ways of trying to just yeah. really trying to be different, you know. You yeah. see names down, and you couldn't make head nor tail of them, you know. Yeah, yeah. anyway, uh, just to tell people out there, Tom, um, I keep forgetting, we're from the Liberal Historical Society, and uh, we hope that um, we might, if all goes well. We might be able to have an outing well in July. We'll head for now at the moment, you know. Mm. We'll wait till October to see what's going to happen with the guys' lectures. But uh, mm. we'll see anyway, but, as I said, watch this space. But it's yeah, well, said at the beginning, there's nothing we can do really. No, no. And the thing is, um, but even if you, like, as I was talking to a man recently who was in another society, and he said, like, even if you have them, if you, even if you call him a, a, a walk now, would people go on it, like, you know? And I, I'm looking around different, like Kerry and Claire at different historic societies, and nobody seems to be making making the bold move. I suppose they can't, you are kind of a gathering, so, you know, and uh, it's difficult because, you see, it is, if you're doing a walk around town with traffic and everything, you have to keep close, you know, and if you're to hear what's going on, even with speakers, and, uh, you know, you, you're always sudden people gather around, so... People will be afraid of, um, I don't you know, know what's going to happen yeah. because yeah. what I miss is uh, is meeting people. As yeah. you know, I go to lectures, well, you do too. And you go to Rathkey, yeah. you go to Castle Connell, yeah. I go to Doom, I go to Capamore if there's something, yeah, yeah. I said to- Castle to- to- Toller, Toller, I go to Toller, you know, I go yeah. to, uh, I often went to uh, oh, Shannon. And, uh, you know, and there's all the mm. other ones I've been to now over the years. Charleville yeah. is kind of fell asunder. The kind of, the, the, the age profile in Charleville really killed us, you know. Yeah. And I died off in I, I, I passed through Charleville this evening and I looked at the building and I thought of Ted Reardon. 
Yeah. I know he was well. Ted, Ted, Ted is lovely. Well, Ted died first. Then Joe yeah. Luna was there and Mrs. Vinci. Yeah. And they've all died, you know, and it's yeah. a pity that it's kind of Ted, Ted, Ted was, Ted was uh, I know a lot of people call people gentlemen in their days, but Ted, Ted was a gentleman, like, you know, he a was. nice man. He's yeah. a nice yeah. man, you know. But yeah. like that, uh, people keep societies together and yeah. do most of the donkey work, you know. You need somebody to keep it together because there are people involved in historical societies, you know, and I know that yeah. people members don't even know them. You know, yeah. Yeah. say like who's the president or who's the chairman, they don't have a fool's notion, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's a pity, but then there's nothing you can do about that. Interest is, is the main thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Few members know, you know, Tom, that are, they're interested in this, they turn up and they ask mm. questions. That's what you want. Yeah. Well, actually, I was just talking to somebody recently and I was saying, like, sometimes a lecture might be just boring or no good, but it's the questions afterwards and the, and the chat afterwards that's often oh, well, more interesting, you know, uh, meeting people and, you know, I, you I, can't, I can't understand, I can't understand people going to a lecture and they bolt for the door as soon as the, the, the wind-up comes, like, you know, uh, right. instead of, like, yeah. you know, if you're out for the night, you know, it's not going to... Like you won't be maybe a half an hour or forty minutes after the lecture, but that's how you meet people and socialize. Like, and that's that's part of it, you know. That is. I mean, some of the societies yeah. now I've been to would, would have tea afterwards, you know. Uh, yeah. I know here now and in uh, in Doom, they have a cup of tea, and you know, and to, yeah. it's, it makes it is the talking afterwards. Like, you know, you're not, you're not going to go for the. Tea. You're not going to like you're not going to skip your your supper to go for the tea, but uh, oh, no, it's just no, have a no, cup no. of tea. It's it's to keep like. You know, you need a tea and a few biscuits, and it keeps the people together, you know. Yeah. But it and, is, uh, it happened to me several times, but by the time I stopped talking, everything was gone. They were cleared up and yeah. all, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in, Cast and, in Castle Con, the Cor or in Castle Con, the corny bread would be gone by the time you get to the table. <laughs> or some of them, some of them now, they you know the corny the bread is there, and they make for it yeah. straight away, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. But to get yeah. it fast, it is gone, you yeah. know. I, but the, the don't say I, I watched people there now. I was, I was up at the top table one night, and I could yeah. I could see the, the speaker kind of finishing up, and those fellas leaning on one leg, to, you know, to, to bowl to so as he give the go ahead, like you know, as he said good night and thank you, you know. It's so, amazing, you know. Well, when yeah. we move to our new premises, we hope that uh, mm. there'll be a cup of tea after as well, because yeah. it's nice to get a cup of tea and. Uh, I mean, it's only a biscuit, you know, one biscuit, yeah. and tea, then it makes it way nicer so you can talk afterwards. That's if people want to wait, you know, yeah. some people are yeah. not interested, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, well, that's, that, majority that's the majority do. Right. The majority of people do take the tea, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I know yeah. in uh, in Duno and in uh, Capamore, and at Capamore, um, uh, Maru, Cap Maru to have a cup of tea as well. And then, I don't do more, that Captain, many of them. Yeah. Captain Morgan onto the pub, but they they, they, they put the only Yeah. And do you know when I went to a lecture last, God, the years of fly now, the, one of the last lectures I was at was up in the Obama Center. Now, it sounds oh, yeah. far away, yeah. but it wasn't. I was there, there in 40 minutes with the new road now. And funnily yeah. enough, they went down to the pub where Obama was, and he hears his pub. That's what they yeah. give to me down there. And I went yeah. down, and I was there with the speaker, and we were talking for ages, you know, afterwards, you know. Mm, yeah, and, uh, yeah, like yeah. That, the only thing then is you forget how far from home you are sometimes when you come out. Yeah. You know, you, well, you at, least, be, like, at, at least you're, you're, having, you're having a few pints on you, like you don't, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Tom, we're talking an hour already. I think this time, this time yeah. we finished up, you know. Yeah. And, and I said, if anybody's watching this and they see us on our own, I'm afraid there's nothing we could do. I had a guest lined up, but I couldn't find him. And uh, maybe there's, there's a genuine reason for it, I do not know. But mm. I've been on since to this morning, since about 11 o'clock, because it, there was a change of time, because Tom had something else to do today, and we were to do 5 o'clock, and then I would put me back till 7. Yeah. Anyway, not to worry, we'll be here next week. Okay, Tony. Yeah, God is good for next week. Yeah, we yeah. hope that uh, we'll have somebody here next yeah. week, you know. Okay. All right, Tony. We'll, we'll waffle away, you know, James. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, Tom. Cheers, all. Good right. job. Right. Right.